I know I don't like to curse often, but this R is pure sh- Why? <laughs> Wait, what? This man doing another one of these? Ho 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 ho! I thought he was that one guy who just made these two good quality videos that actually got some pretty good traction and then released some normal gaming videos that get no hoes. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no. The Fazbear Frights books. Well, what can you say? These books are famous for being some of the most creative, questionable, and weirdly bizarre entries in the franchise. The very first story is about a boy in a time-traveling ball pit. Like, you can't make that up! I was like, well damn, that took a sharp turn. Oh, you thought it couldn't get weirder? A flashback, I repeat, a flashback of Spring Bonnie William Afton comes out of the ball pit, jokes this man's dad, then went around acting like him. The people around never saw a problem! Like, bruh! What are those eyes Dems people have? One, two, five, eight? I'm not sure, but I know it gotta be Total Cheeks. His wife really not realizing she making love to a gosh damn animatronic the size of a freaking bear. I still don't understand that to this day. We're gonna be talking about one of these books. Ah, uh, 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 but hold on. Not just a regular one of these books. If you even consider the later entries of a woman turning to a gummy candy, a pink goo, turning into a human, or a bunch of little blue sea monkeys that look like Bonnie multiplying a dude's body while eating away at the inside normal... Whoa, slow down, babe. We're gonna be discussing a book I never thought was actually going to happen. We are gonna be discussing, ladies and gentlemen, I present to thee the worst FNAF graphic novel in all of history, Fazbear Frights Graphic Novel Volume 1. Now, I love graphic novels. I only listen to read-alouds of normal books because I hate normal books. My mind don't see what the others see with this chicken scrabble. Words can create a thousand pictures? Well, I can see letters here, so, um, yeah, myth busted. For real, though, I am very creative, but my mind doesn't dive off into the madness that other people do properly. I would think of nonsense the whole time while not actually understanding what the hell is going on. So I only went for graphic novels where I don't have to think, just watch and enjoy the amazing images, stories, and characters from them. I don't really do comics because they are just relatively short. If I want to read one of these, I want it long, you know, like... A graphic novel. I don't read manga though. I prefer the actual anime itself, so to avoid spoilers I stay away from anime related social media. I was around since the beginning of Five Nights at Freddy's. I was there when the series was at its peak with the four big games released, and the embarrassment that took a wild turn for the franchise wasn't out yet. When I heard FNAF was getting a book, I was excited, but the thing is, it was a regular dictionary looking book. Plus, I was already tied up with book reports, cause, yeah, childhood. Another book dropped, and then another one dropped. One day, much after that, me and my brother were at Walmart, aka my future workplace. I saw the silver eyes on the shelf, but it looked different. Then I opened it out of curiosity, only to be revealed a world of pure joy. This was after I was finished with the graphic novel series I grew up with, The Bone Books by Ridley Smith, and that one book called Smash. I eventually had time to check it out, so I was at the high school library. I asked for it, rented it, read it, and loved it. Then I asked for the Twisted Ones graphic novel. Uh, the original cover had Nightmare for some reason. I rented it, read it, and loved it too, even more than the first. I was so excited to see how the trilogy would end, but then I had to wait for the fourth closet to get its graphic novel. Bottom line is, I had to wait a while. But it eventually came out, and I loved it equally as the second. Not to mention the William Afton design is by far my most favorite human design of him. Not hard to choose when the others look like this man really out here looking like he got extreme frostbite all over. In 8-bit pixels. Okay, my body's completely numb. The DP has done nothing. 
I feel really cold. I think I'm going to die very shortly. So then I listened to the audio reading of the first of many FNAF Goosebumps ripoffs. I personally really loved these stories. Scott took his imagination through the roof and to the moon. I couldn't believe what I was hearing half the time. A story about a human-faced cat that was actually shipped to someone through the mail is definitely something that would uh, make haunted animatronics look normal in comparison if I were to put that lightly. I got actual chills, and when the violent and gruesome deaths in the stories happen, the book is not afraid to get descriptive, and goes into horrifying description of the situations. Shivers Down My Spine is an understatement when it comes to the feelings from these books, when the horror moments are presented. Since these books were entirely different from the trilogy, I never thought they would get the graphic novel treatment. There were just too many stories, and I was perfectly okay with that. It would be just too much work for Scott to have. But unfortunately, Scott did plan to have all that hard work around him, because about eight months ago, they announced the first Fazbear Frights graphic novel. This was a bit exciting, but also a bit worrying for me. I was at the time where I was heavily critical of things FNAF, and with how much I loved the graphic novel trilogy, I hoped they would put the same amount of time and effort into these. Which, spoiler alert, they obviously didn't. So about seven months ago when I was at Walmart, again the book was on the shelf, so I wanted to see how the stories were handled. And while yes, they did stay true to the original story-wise, but in terms of certain context and art, uh, you already know I'm gonna be in for it. Before we get into the stories, make sure to like and subscribe along with the ringing bell to get notified when I post a new video, or you can write your opinion of my content in the comments section. I'll be sure to read it. Or you can just subscribe, that'll work too. And last but not least, I want to personally thank each and every one of you for how successful the St. Jude charity stream was. Not only did we manage to achieve the goal that I set that was impossible, according to me considering my audience count, but you guys more than doubled it. Life is short, and it's a fact we often take for granted. I certainly got reminded when a truly loved four-legged member of the family went on a one-way trip to see the man upstairs just the previous night. So it sucks that illnesses are trying to cut those already short lives even shorter on children. If you wish to help them, I currently have a page with the link in the description of this video if you wish to contribute. Now with that out of the way, let's cook up these meat and potatoes. With Fazbear Frights Graphic Novel 1, I do indeed like to suffer for your entertainment. First up is Into the Pit by Diddy Esmeralda. Uh, hopefully I pronounced that right, Diddy. She did a pretty good service to the story and its characters. The story itself was the same, but sometimes you'll find text misplacements and frames that don't actually match the personality of some characters. Jeff is a guy who never smiles, so the fact that he smiles here is a bit odd. And the art is very good despite the horribly drawn FNAF 1 Foxy and rapid design changing Spring Bonnie. Oswald has to spend summer break alone since his friends is on his own trip. They removed to a different town and Oswald got sick of the same thing every day so he hides in the ball pit to surprise his father. I'm gonna prank my dad. The ball pit sends him back in time, the bunny shows Oswald the censored children of 87, and the bunny partakes and pretends to be the father because everyone in this town is freaking blind, and Oswald saves his dad by hanging Spring Bonnie with a net. The end. This story is one of my favorites, and I'm glad it was done justice. Looking like the same charm from the trilogy just does it for me. What do you mean by that? Next up is To Be Beautiful by Anthony Morris Jr. Anthony, let me give you a round of applause. I swear I'm using my hands. I'm not doing anything else. Uh, you did amazing. The art here is the best out of the three in my opinion, and the levels of shading and detail showed he took his time with this. It was genuinely stunning to look at. Is it not to the same style I'm used to? Eh, uh, no, but I prefer extending the horizon and giving other styles a shot before I say it's objectively bad. That being said, this next one is objectively bad, uh, but I'll get to that though, don't worry. 
A girl named Sarah wants to be beautiful. Gee, I wonder how I saw that one coming. She finds a circus baby design reject called Eleanor, and when she sleeps, she turns more beautiful each day, getting to hang out with cool girls and getting a boyfriend, not to mention showing her mother her enlarged pair of gigantic bounce- Hey, stop! I- why? I just don't get it. I always catch you watching this sick shit. Everything seems to be going good for Sarah, until she falls over losing the necklace, then literally turns into a pile of trash while Ellen- <laughs> Until she falls over losing the necklace, then literally turns into a pile of trash while Eleanor steals her look and runs away. You little hoe! You skinny little hoe! So, you know what that means! It means we're on the third one! Yay! This story. This story. Thus, story. <laughs> Where do I start? Let's just get the summary out of the way. This story is drawn by Andy Santagata. I'm pretty sure that's how you say his name. Oscar and his friends want to plunge trap chaser. They go to the store only to find out that no dip, Sherlock. Everyone wants one too. This woman out here looking like a typical whatever Stacy. Oscar didn't make it in time before they sold out, so he stole one that was returned while paying. Come on guys, he may be a dasher, but he's no sacred bricks. Snag some nether stuff, and more nether stuff. Alright, although we stole all of this and totally didn't pay for any of it, we have somehow passed the budget, so we need to get home and build. They get home, think the chaser sucks, now they get attacked by la- <laughs> They get home, think- <laughs> <laughs> they get home, think the chaser sucks, and now they get attacked later, and then get some flashlights in it. I'm literally not gonna be able to survive this recording. <laughs> they get home, think the chaser sucks now, they get attacked later, and after some flashlight shenanigans, they get to run a train on them. No, 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 not, not, not like that, not like that, I swear, no, it was like this. I'm, I'm in a drive through a Burger King. Can I please get a wobble junior wet on your Bam! The end. Why did I rush through that one a bit more than the others? Because now that we're gonna get to the part of how this story makes this graphic novel the worst. Yeah. It's the art. Before I get really mad, let's check out these frames. All right, I'm done prepping up. Andy, I won't go easy on you, bro. I'm sorry. I know it probably wasn't your fault, but I really need to lay some uh, facts down for you. This is not Plush Trap. It looks nothing like him. I'm just gonna say it. This art of the story sucks. It's just bad. But the thing is, I wouldn't mind it too much if it wasn't for this idiot. This is the worst plush trap design I've seen in my life. I know it would be plagiarism, but I wish they just drawn in the plush trap chaser fan models, cause those guys know what they're doing. This is garbage. Not only does this design suck cheeks, it's not even drawn good. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the f Bruh. I'm on this bitch. I'm on this guy. When I got this book, I was still at work, so when I was done with my break, I showed this book to Jonah for how bad the art was, and he was like, bro, what happened to the Grinch? I don't care what anyone says. If your character looks like this on the cover, but looks like this in the actual book, then that's called something. You know what that is, little Timmy? It's called false advertising. Congratulations, you wasted your money. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I haven't read the book, but I know the details of the plush trap chaser, read through me multiple times, and looking at the official source to make sure I ain't full of cap. Never included a bib with rapid changing ears and puffed up cheeks with those stupid eyes and smile. He looks flat out ugly, and is a disgrace to the character that is plush trap. I don't know about you guys, but plush trap was always one of my favorites. I loved his mechanic and design concept, He's just ruined in the story, and it's just awful. He plays his part, but he looked like a gosh dang joke. Honestly, 
I think the Fazbear Frights never needed graphic novels. I just recommend listening to the stories through a read aloud so you can imagine your own interpretation. Not only do the graphic novels take away that imagination, but the minds of the community came up with better designs. I don't know why Scott took this direction. Skipping stories and then redrawing them? It was just... It was just disappointing, to say the least. But I'm still gonna buy these since I love graphic novels in FNAF, but I won't have any expectations for this new book line. I've already lost faith in them. I've seen the second one, and it's better, but we'll talk about it next time. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Sir Yaluzel, Holy Knight of the Walmart Table, Defender of Maidens and Justice. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Love you. <laughs>